mother's pride and joy you know but she will never let him go his family want to run his life and the girlfriend wants to be the wife and when he's proudly on the beat women all shout he's too young to be out but they will eat their words he knows when he's inspector At this point, the accused became excited and began to wave his bottle opener at me, shouting, I don't need to be told how to behave by anyone as pink and fluffy-cheeked as you. <laughs> by this time, a small crowd had gathered to whom the accused began to appeal, saying, Would you believe this Gestapo comedian? Still wet behind the ears, but thinks he can come between man and wife. The accused then took another drink from his bottle, waved it in my face and asked if I understood that the marriage state was a sacred and private relationship. And if he wanted to make the silly cow's nose bleed, what business did he think that was a mine? <laughs> Sit down, lad. God, are we taking them straight from the breast now? That's a PC Penrose, sir. Primrose, Sergeant. Penrose, sir. That's what I thought you said. Primrose. <laughs> I was never as young as that. Were you ever as young as that? You've got the makings of a good lad, sir. He's, uh, he's keen. He reminds me of somebody. Miss Amalgamated Broadies, 1922, I think it was. <laughs> I've spoken to him about that, sir. Apparently, it's his aftershave. You're satisfied it's not something he's dabbing behind his ears? I'm satisfied. <laughs> We're not sending him anywhere dangerous, are we? He's doing his job, sir. Well, spread the word around the harbour that if I catch anyone making love to one of my young policemen... <laughs> ..against his will, I'll have the lifeboat launched over his painted toenail. <laughs> well, don't pull his arm out, then. Oh, we can talk. No need to go exciting yourself, handling us like that. Well, well, well. Mooney and Slack. The lilies of the field. They tie not neither the spin. Hello, Mr Dunwoody. This has all been a bit of a misunderstanding, Mr Dunwoody. You could say that. Yes, you could say that. Any pair with pronounced antisocial tendencies that walk into my police station making merry quips are profoundly underestimating the high seriousness of this establishment. It's just our bit of fun, Mr Dunwoody. Yeah, where's your sense of humour, Mr Dunwoody? <laughs> <laughs> it was abolished, lad, along with the death penalty. Get me. <laughs> Chief Inspector Dunwoody has a way with the criminal classes. Then study his ways, lad. Cram your head with law and your belly will start your fold. And pray for the day when you too can command the enormous psychological advantage of 19 stone of pure bloody mindedness. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> Duty office, PC Penrose. Gillian! Gillian, I have asked you not to phone me here. Yes, even if you do tell them on the switchboard that you're a lady burglar who gives me information from time to time. <laughs> well, you didn't, did you? Well, suppose they asked me what the information was. Oh, I wish you'd pack it in, Gillian. I'm busy. No, I am not sitting here thinking about you. I am sitting here quietly typing a report. You know why I don't want to marry you, Gillian? Because you're weird. <laughs> no, I don't want us to go out with your parents tonight. I hate going out with your parents. It gives them the wrong impression. They keep looking at me as a son-in-law and I can't bear to see somebody in so much pain. <laughs> They don't like me. They don't have to say it. It's something you can sense, isn't it? Well, why does your father keep looking at his watch? <laughs> and all your mother can talk about is how sensitive you are as a person, which apparently makes it absolutely necessary that you marry some wealthy, filthy old man. All right.
right, all right. If you promise not to ring me again, I'll come. No, no, I'm not depressed. Well, maybe just a bit. Chief Inspector Dunwoody thinks I look too young. I'm gonna have to try smoking a pipe again. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Gillian. But I don't think he cares if I've got lovely eyes. <laughs> Justice PC Penrose, we of the Ravens Bay Constabulary are extremely proud to think that you've got lovely eyes. <laughs> Moriarty was the barely perceptible palm print I managed to lift from the sole of your victim's shoe. Yes, you see, Moriarty, I know why you killed him. He was standing on your hand. Tell me where Andrew Street is, please. And you go past Sanderson's, the chemist, and it's second on the right. <laughs> Thank you. that, but he's got lovely eyes. <laughs> uh, it's always a long job when Mooney gets amnesia. Of course, I'm not saying he's guilty. There's always a first time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a policeman, lad, but you'll have to do. <laughs> I want you to go stand in that interview room and keep an eye on them two while we go check their fanciful alibi. Keep an eye on them, sir. Right, sir. Right or left, I don't care which. <laughs> <laughs> Although, it looks to me as if your left eye is watering, which is due to smoke, I hope, and not to any compassion for the criminal classes. <laughs> off you go, then, before they nick the pattern off the wallpaper. <laughs> and, uh, don't check any jolly red party of them. Just stand there, dominate them, by sheer force of personality. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I always find it so exciting in here, staring at four walls and a policeman. Yeah. I suppose it's one of the advantages of a life of crime, a sheer excitement. I think it was Dunn who said, no man is an island. But some of these professional crooks look big enough to support the odd palm tree. <laughs> Mind you, I will say that this time they've given us a nicer sort of young policeman. Yeah. I mean, you could live with him on your mantelpiece, couldn't you? <laughs> yes, you could. Stuffed. <laughs> I hate getting nicked on an empty stomach. <laughs> yeah, we had no breakfast. We're still in bed, weren't we? Then we heard these dainty footsteps tripping up the stairs. 
Sends a cold chill straight up the bird you're in bed with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how can you please your innocence when you're standing there in your shirt in front of six policemen? You're bound to look a bit furtive, aren't you? Look, it's police harassment being nicked when you're still in bed. Not when it's nearly lunchtime. Listen, if you've got to get up at seven every morning, there's no point in not working for a living, is there? But it plays havoc on your nerves, life of crime. I get these terrible stomach twinges. And you've got to keep up this grim ganglang facade. But internally... <coughs> oh. <laughs> You're an anguished mess. Other major criminals, such as Napoleon, was just the same. It's the responsibility. But he had Josephine. How about this? <laughs> Give over, we're like brothers, you and me. <laughs> Just shut up while I'm talking to the young man, will you? Um, I, I, I'm not as young as you might think. No, I should say not. <laughs> oh, oh, it made me feel quite sick, did that? Well, you haven't had any breakfast, have you? Oh, it could be that. On the other hand, it could be some hooligan just went bash. I keep going to the shrink, privately, of course, and I thought I was a thief. <laughs> he says there's nothing organically wrong. It's all psychosomatic. Basically, I'm too sensitive for the wear and tear of the avaricious society. You <laughs> oh, like this fool, who essentially is just a shallow bleeder. I get this terrible heartburn. What, what, what do you keep taking for it? I mean, apart from other people's money. <laughs> Food. I have to have regular meals, otherwise I get all tense. <gasps> oh! Tell him, I'm unbearable for live with. He's going to be in eight separate pieces when they get this pot off. The arm's going to be in a small pile on the floor. <laughs> and, of course, what I need, most of all, is an atmosphere of calm and tranquility. I've got this hi-fi, which some fool scratched get it through the window. <laughs> uh, don't go making any notes, cos we were found not guilty. <laughs> but if I can put my feet up, just the bass and the treble, quick half-hour of Borodin, Quick bit of Tchaikovsky and I'm away. The pain goes like magic. But it does me no good getting dragged down here twice a week just so's Dunwoody can keep his hand in. Yeah, we didn't do it. We were miles away. From what? Uh, from uh, whatever it is he thinks we did. Maybe he left plaster prints all over the till. Hey. <laughs> oh, very funny. <laughs> You better have a sandwich before your stomach starts interfering with the police transmitters. <laughs> it just saved my life, that's all. They're probably picking your heartburn up all over town. <laughs> oh, uh, one thing. Um, my Auntie Ida cuts the crusts off. Now, uh, some people think that's very funny, a policeman with dainty sandwiches. So, uh, <laughs> if, if you think it's funny, perhaps we better not continue with this. I think that shows class. I think it's funny. <laughs> He's a great kid. Your Auntie Ida understands these things. And what about your colleague? Mm. That is sad but true. I apologise for my colleague. He's a twat with no breeding. Uh, no, I mean, would he like a sandwich? He's not hungry. He never eats when he's in pain. <laughs> uh, how did he break his arm? Don't ask. Months I've been setting up this job. And there was this one simple novice climb up a drain pipe. And he fell off the bleeding roof, didn't he? <laughs> oh, well, I'd better go home and get the wife's tea ready. Before you were married, how do you used to go on when you had to meet her parents? Terrible. Oh, thanks. I was always conscious of the airs in me nose. Why was Dunwoody shouting at you just now? I've been feeding his prisoners. I could hear him across the building. I know. You wouldn't think a sandwich could carry that far. <laughs> Why shouldn't you feed a prisoner? It's not as if he was keeping them for racing or breeding purposes. Ah, uh, don't get depressed. You're thinking about your promotion prospects, aren't you? Well, don't worry about it. In 20 years' time, you'll have forgotten it ever happened. Seems to count for nothing that I'd established a good relationship with Mooney. Yes. Had him eating out of your hand. All right, Penrose lover, you've got me. I've come to give myself up. 
Well, uh, well, I'll be off then. See you, Wilmot. Do you have to say things like that, Gillian? <laughs> I wish you would call for me outside the police station. You want us to meet in secret? I'm <laughs> oh, me down some lonely stretch of the back seat. I've had a bad day. It's not going to get any better. We're having dinner tonight with the parents. The whole meal? Well, can't we just have a drink and then go our separate ways? No! Mummy wants to talk. With whom? With you. Oh, God. She won't hurt you. No? She does a nice line in bitchiness with your father. Ah, oh, yes, she loves him. I suppose she even likes you. That's encouraging. Of course it is. I mean, she'll be polite. We're gonna have to stop seeing each other, Gillian. Give it time. Give it time. You can't just rush into not seeing each other. I'm serious. Do you realise how many marriages get off to a bad start by rushing into not seeing each other? Why is it that whenever I'm with you, it takes you about five seconds to get the subject round to marriage? If you don't want to marry me, lover, all you've got to do is say no. I keep saying no. <laughs> See how we agree on everything? We want to get married. Don't encourage her. I like her. You don't have to meet her parents. That's a very well-kept hedge, Uncle Norman. Well, they keep sending me out to trim it whenever it grows. With a bit of luck now, I shan't have to cut it again until about half past three. <laughs> <laughs> What's your opinion of marriage, Uncle Norman? Gets you out in the fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> Were you very much in love with Auntie Ida? Good God, no. <laughs> it's just somebody I went out with for a while and then married. What happens then? Does love come later? Sometimes. I remember this little typist at the office Christmas party. Not you, Uncle Norman. I don't see why not me. Because it's going to destroy my faith in simple goodness. It's like discovering Anna Eagle in a blue movie. <laughs> I say little typist. Actually, she was a fairly big typist. Always thought of her as rather chunky. When I'd seen her during the course of the year, hello, I'd thought, you're a bit chunky. <laughs> she had thick legs. Do you go around staring at legs? Well, they've got to be pretty unusual. And female. Is this why Auntie Ida keeps you outside? <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> she never knew anything. Not that there was anything to know. Not really. What do you mean, not really? 
You and I have been feeding you tea and biscuits all these years under the impression that you were mild-mannered and without a blemish on your character. Well, don't just sit there crunching biscuits. Aren't you going to do anything to repair this sudden dramatic shift in our relationship? There's nothing to repair. It was just that for an hour or so I developed this great feeling of tenderness for her. It seemed that in that noisy, drunken office party I'd found something pure and decent. A shy thing I wanted to protect. Well, go on, then what happened? She tried to drag me into a broom cupboard. <laughs> so I came home to your Aunt Ida, who, for all their faults, has never, ever tried to drag me into a broom cupboard. <laughs> I came home, opened the door, wished your Auntie Ida a Merry Christmas, and as soon as I heard her shouting at me for walking across the wet floor, I knew that everything was all right. <laughs> the world was still in its proper place. I have no intention of getting married. Won't save you in the end. Rubbish. I'm always very frank with Gillian. I always tell her quite bluntly that I am not interested in marriage. And, as a consequence, Tonight, she's got me meeting the parents. <laughs> it's still on foot. Bill, I'm talking to you. All right, all right. Doesn't it worry you that your daughter wants to marry a pedestrian? <laughs> he hasn't got a car. Don't be stupid. Everybody's got a car. Except the creature our daughter wants to marry. What do you mean, marry? Who said anything about marriage? Your daughter, if you'd listen. She says it constantly. But that's ridiculous. How can she marry? I haven't found her anybody suitable yet. <laughs> trying to tell me that my only child wants to marry a policeman. Young Michael Penrose. She's been infatuated ever since they went to school together. That pink-faced kid she keeps bringing home and chasing around the conservatory. Yes. He's a policeman? Yes. Good God. <laughs> Do you mean to say that if I had an emergency at my factory or here and had to summon assistance, it could be him? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I couldn't dream of marrying you, Gillian. Not until I've earned your father's respect. Don't be silly. We can't wait that long. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on a police career. <sighs> which, is, which is very difficult when you're doing that in my ear. <laughs> I remember his father, another idiot. The only decisive thing I ever knew him to do was to die suddenly and leave his wife a widow. Have you met? The widow Penrose, the ghastly Millie. Oh, God. Imagine having that in the family. Oh, I can't stand her. She wears makeup as though she were playing the Mikado. <laughs> Maybe she'll die, poor woman. They say she's a semi invalid. Like a basking shark, she's a semi invalid. <laughs> what the devil? <laughs> what the devil's the matter with Gillian? Now, don't start acting surprised. I've kept warning you about this. She's been infatuated with the boy for years. A uh, crafty swine. <laughs> he looks as if butter wouldn't melt. I knew she'd fall for some smooth talking. He never seems to say a word, actually. There you are, then. Of all the low coming. I suspect he's quite sweet, really. Oh, my God. That's all I need to hand a thriving business over to. Hello, you two. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Chislehurst. You're looking flushed, Michael. Now, I hope you've offered him a drink, Gillian. Young men need something to do with their hands. <laughs> he doesn't drink much, Mummy. He's sober and industrious and extremely sexy in a well-behaved sort of a way. <laughs> Have you got a drink, you kid? It's all right, Daddy. We'll just hang around and watch the way you professionals do it. <laughs> <laughs> Little bitch. <laughs> well, uh, 
How goes it, Malcolm? It's Michael, actually. Oh, it's fine, thank you, Mr. Chislehurst. I'd have sworn it was Malcolm. Oh, you may as well change it, Michael. It's going to be easier in the long run. Don't be offensive, Julian. It's Barbara, actually. <laughs> uh, sometimes I wish, instead of taking A-levels, I'd learnt a few card tricks instead. <clears throat> I hate going to parties. <laughs> you can bet your boots there's always some idiot who can play 40 musical instruments or uh, entertain you for hours with a simple matchbox. <laughs> Still out there walking the streets day and night, eh? Yes. Hell of a way to make a living. Cousin Stephanie seems to do well out of it. <laughs> uh, I think we'd better be going. Uh, run and fetch the car round, will you, darling? <laughs> Who the hell told her about Stephanie? I had to tell her. You blabbermouth. Well, she was bound to find out. I thought it was much better if I explained that it was a hormone irregularity. <laughs> uh, where are we eating? Well, I thought somewhere expensive. Demonstrate to the boy, tactfully, of course, that he's out of his league. That would be kindest. Let him see the circles that we move in and draw his own conclusions. I only hope to God he's got no more tricks with his blasted matches. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio. Ah, buona sera, signor. Uh, it's a nicer to see you again. I have a lovely table here. Please, you Thank sit you it down. Sure. Luigi, Julia, la carta. Vite. Malcolm, oh. you sit down there, darling. <clears throat> Antonio, um, arguably the most notable influence on northern English haute cuisine. A great man in his field. If you get a smile from Antonio, boy, You've arrived. <coughs> How's it going, kid? Saved my life, this character, a gent. Ah, uh, don't touch the cannelloni, folks. It's cruddy. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we, uh, we sell in the meat, don't we? And this lot fell off a very insanitary lorry. <laughs> We're not making any notes because we've got another alibi. <laughs> I tell you, like, it's not really knocked off. It's just that if they think it is, they'll scratch your hand off at any price. <laughs> well, bon appetit, me old darling. <laughs> Mussolini. <laughs> I want you to treat this kid right. Of, of course, the Senior Mounier. This uh, establishment he is at his uh, disposal. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I strongly recommend uh, this evening the Semolina Gnocchi alla Romana. Oh, that's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> seem like a boy to you but he's proud to be a boy in blue people think he's rather dim and try to make a fool of him but one day he will change their minds make them believe that he's not so naive and they'll be proud to be the friend 